Hi, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I've had the distinct pleasure of being the president of the North American Menopause Society through 2017. And I'm joined today with a former member of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Risa Kagan. Welcome. Hi, how do you do, Marla? Tell everybody what you do. Okay, well, I'm a clinical professor in the Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the University of California, San Francisco, where I teach medical students and residents. And I've been there for over uh, 30 years. But I'm a practicing gynecologist, so I actually still see patients, mostly menopausal women, in the East Bay with the Sutter Health Foundation. And um, I also do clinical research. So on behalf of clinicians, all of us who see women who have hot flashes, and despite the 2017 hormone position statement that talks about the safety and use of initiation of hormones, for women who don't want hormones and also don't want another pharmacological preparation, right? really want to do something else, right? where does the science take us? Well, you have to understand first, before we get into any of that, that anything we try for hot flashes, as you probably know, have, has a huge placebo response. Right. So women are motivated, they want it to work, and there is truly, if I always say, if you can extract that placebo in the brain, I'll tell you that's really what's gonna work. <laughs> so I say you know, to women, go over to your friendly uh, you know, Whole Foods and look for placebo. But when you really look at the evidence of randomized controlled trials, okay, of all the alternatives, people try everything. Everything. Everything possible. I have a list here know, that's huge, huge. But, but really, looking at the evidence and randomized against placebo, um, really what really is working for people is hypnosis, cognitive behavioral right. therapy, um, mindfulness space, and maybe there was one study of a little bit of weight loss that might be helping. But when you really look at paced respirations and people who are avoiding triggers and people who are exercise, yoga, acupuncture, when they really were tested against the rigor of a placebo response trial, it didn't hold up. But on the other hand, for other reasons or for other making people feel better, um, I think all of those things are not harmful. They're not like taking a drug, so I don't think that's a problem. So that's, that's my next question. There's so many things that are over the market, so many herbals that don't have package inserts or right. safety and we hear patients taking ginseng or Don Kwai or any one of a number of herbs. Right, right. You know, what do we do as clinicians? I know, well, believe it or not, you have to look at the purity, see where they're coming from, but none of the evidence shows all of these herbs and short trials may have some benefit, but when you really carry them out, there was this very large trial out to 12 months with the Hall trial where they randomized it against placebo, it really didn't make a difference at all. There is one extract that is now being studied mostly in Japan, um, and it's a metabolite of an isoflavone called um, daidzine, okay? So soy and soy products, is that where the direction yeah, that we're well, going in? Yeah, except there was a big Cochrane analysis looking at all of these soy products and uh, phytoestrogens that didn't pan out. But it's much more complicated than making all soy or isoflavones equal. This may specifically, this supplement that apparently is being studied, and there is some good, well-controlled trials, mostly, as I said, out of Japan, looking at S equal, it's called a supplement, mm -hmm. um, randomized against placebo in some studies related to bone, hot flashes, and even skin, looks like it may have some potential benefit, but I think we need to have longer studies and larger studies to look at it. It seems to be a metabolite of one of the isoflavones called daidzine. Mm -hmm. And some people have an enzyme that can actually naturally metabolize and convert to this product, but many people are lacking it. So by giving the supplement S equal, it might help. There's also a small study, randomized, that looks maybe promising, very small numbers, a Swedish polish, pollen extract from um, Europe that may also have a little bit of benefit. But over and beyond that, when you look at people buying you know, all of the herbs mm -hmm. and even vitamins, all the vitamins, vitamin E is a big one. Yes. That has been tested absolutely. Primrose. Primrose has been looked at again, level one evidence. B6, no, B12. I know, really none of it. I'm gonna call it the whole alphabet, but one you're gonna say yes, D. D, not for hot flashes. Not for hot flashes. No, but for bone. But a vitamin yeah, yeah, right, 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 population. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, again, I think it has to do, since we're not looking at pharmaceuticals here, right. you know, it's okay to do yoga and it's great to try acupuncture, but when you really look at it for hot flash reduction 
It may make people feel better, okay, mm -hmm. reduce pain or whatever you're looking at it for, but it really was in randomized strict trials. Um, really, it is CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, some mindfulness, and um, really, but the yoga and all of the was, exercise. Was, was Another one is exercise. Exercise is wonderful. And if you do want to try S equal, yes. is there any downside or, or is it available just as S equal? It's a supplement available as S equal, and I've, thus far I don't see the downside to it. I just think that we need longer studies to really tell us whether it's going to really work over time. Overall, I think one of the messages for clinicians is ask what your patients are taking because and many patients Absolutely. often don't think that any of the supplements that they're self buying, self-medicating is not important to tell us. Absolutely. In fact, if you're going in for surgery, it's now really on the list because some of the supplements can make people bleed um, excessively. So we really have people stopping all herbs, supplements, and vitamins at least seven days you know, before surgeries. Perfect. So, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Happy to help you.